Hey there, Nick Denithakis here. In this video, we're going to go over four different ways where we can take a selection of text and then wrap it with a specific HTML tag, such as wrapping paragraphs with a P tag. And we're going to start off by doing this manually, right? Going through the motions of what key sequences we need to press to do this. Then we're going to automate the process using a Vim macro. Then we're going to completely switch our strategy around and use a plugin called Vim Surround. And finally, we're going to leave Vim altogether and convert Markdown to HTML using a command line tool. And really, depending on your use case, any one of those uh, sequences or steps or strategies to do this might be the correct one to use for your specific problem. So I like to start most of my videos with the why. If you don't care about the why, then feel free to use the timestamps and jump around to whichever specific strategy that you want to use. So this all stemmed from me working on my next course, which is deploying web applications. And the way I work best when it comes to creating courses is to script everything out word for word, kind of like what you see here. And this really helps me organize my thoughts, like build a table of contents, get a rough idea of like how long the videos are going to be. And then in some cases, you know, a majority of this course is going to be following along together, writing commands, writing scripts, getting it all working. But there are, uh, you know, probably out of like a 10 hour course, there's probably going to be like 30 minutes of slides. And uh, I was getting to this point now where I wanted to take some of what's in the script here and convert these over to slides. And the slide view is what we see here. So these are HTML slides. I am using uh, reveal.js to do these slides. And it's kind of nice, like it totally works offline. There's no like server that you need to run. You just open up an HTML file. It seems like a great way to deal with slides. And when it comes to the slides themselves, you know, you can have, you know, headers or bullets or whatever you want, but they also have like this note section here in the slides, which are basically like slide notes, like things you wouldn't see on video if you were watching it, but they help me because it kind of keeps me on track. You know, I can see, you know, uh, some notes there. And what I wanted to do was start converting some of this to slides. So I wanted to, you know, for example, take a couple of paragraphs here, copy them, and then drop them over down here into uh, the notes. And then there we go. But we can see here, this is an HTML file and this is, you know, valid HTML, sure. But you know, if I want to make these notes a little bit more readable, I need to surround you know, this selection of text with a paragraph and this one as well, because over here, they're just in markdown format. You know, there's no P tags here. So let's go through the motions of how we can do this manually, right? So really the basic idea is like, go to beginning of line, open up insert mode, open up the paragraph tag, and then go to the end of the line in, you know, wherever you want to add the closing paragraph uh, tag and do that. So you can see, you know, like I clicked around to the beginning of the end, but there's shortcuts to do this in Vim. For example, if we do shift I, that is going to put us into insert mode at the beginning of the line. Then we can just start typing. There's our opening tag. And then if we want to go to this line here, we can do shift A. That brings us in insert mode at the end of the line. So that's kind of the sequence that we want to automate, right? It's like go to beginning of line, open insert mode, put tag, and then go back to normal mode. And then we'll do the same thing for the end. So let me just uh, undo that a little bit here and let's automate this process now using macros. And I'm just gonna copy in a couple other paragraphs here too. Technically, these are not gonna be part of like this slide, but for our example here, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just gonna be easier to see how like, why this is beneficial to automate. So uh, when it comes to Vim macros, like I am not a pro with using them, right? I just learned about them the other day because I was like, well, you know, I don't want to do that sequence of keys uh, a whole bunch of times manually. Surely there's a way to automate that. And like Vim macro seemed like a great way to do that. So the idea with a Vim macro is you can, you know, assign a sequence of keys to a specific key, you know, execute your macro, do what you need to do, like your key sequence. And then later on, you can just go and run that macro and it is going to repeat that sequence on whatever line or lines that you want to do it on. So that seemed like a great way to solve this problem. So when it comes to using Vim macros, you need to basically hit Q to start, but then you have to also pick a key that you want to assign the macro to. So in my case now, I'm going to hit Q and then O. So my thought process behind that is like O for the opening tag. And then we're going to make a second macro for the closing tag. So right now you can see in the bottom left that I'm recording this O macro. So if we remember our key sequence that we needed to do was shift I to be beginning of line. And then we need to uh, create our P tag, hit escape, and then you can hit Q to stop recording the macro. So now if I go to this line over here and we want to repeat that macro, uh, all we need to do now is hit the at key like shift two, and then the key that we assigned the macro to in my case was O, so we can do it there. And we can do it again here, right? Like at O, and then great. 
But let me undo uh, these two here. And there's even a quicker way, right? Uh, with Vim, you can always hit the dot key to repeat the last action. So you can do your at O there and then go to this one and then just like pop, pop, boom. And now we have like it repeated as many times as we need to do it, right? And that seems like uh, pretty useful, right? But we still need to do the closing tag. So let's make another macro with Q and then C like for closing. And then what is our macro here? It's going to be shift A, end of line, close the tag, escape, done. And then hit Q again to stop the macro. And then now we can go over here and do at C, great. And then we can do our dot dot to end off the last two, right? And that started to get pretty nice because I use the dot feature all the time in Vim. And, you know, these things kept getting replaced between like the opening uh, paragraph tag and the closing one. So that's kind of why I made the macro to do that. And, uh, it worked totally fine, no problems at all. I did like 20 slides like that. But then I started thinking like, well, you know, is there a better way to do this? Because there's probably at least like 100 more slides you need to make throughout the rest of the course. And, you know, I kind of wondered like maybe there's a faster way. So let me undo all of this here. So we're back to where we were before, like no macros. And uh, and by the way, when you close Vim, those macros are going to be gone. So you need to recreate them. Maybe there's a way to persist them. I never looked into it, but I'm sure there is a way. But um. Yeah, just for solving this specific problem of wrapping some text with a paragraph tag, uh, you can also use a plugin called Vim Surround. And this is a plugin that is currently in my uh, VimRC file, but it's not commit to my dot files. You know, this plugin has been on and off in my VimRC file. But anyways, you know, like Tpo made it, it's a great plugin. And it allows you to do things like, you know, surrounding text with quotes or parentheses, but you can also use it for tags like this. So. Let's say that we want to take this selection of text, like I'm literally selecting that, right? You can do capital S and then T, and notice here in the bottom left, it's expecting us now to put in uh, the tag that we want, and then we can close the tag, and automatically it just inserts the opening paragraph and closing paragraph on that selection of text. You know, I can also not use the mouse too, right? I can do shift V, and then there we go, right? Like I just did it for this paragraph here, then I can do the capital uh, S and T, there's the paragraph tag, and we're done. And then you can continue doing that for all the other ones. So unfortunately, if you try to do the dot here, it is not going to uh, repeat exactly what was done. So that does mean that like you need to go through the motions of doing the ST and then the P and the close. And you know I'll do it one more time here, but this time with a different tag, right? Like if you were working with, uh, I don't know, like an H2 or something like that, you can use an H2 instead and you can see the opening and closing H2, like it's all good. And that's definitely, in my opinion, for this use case, probably a little bit faster than making the two macros. So, you know, then I started using that for a while. But then I really started to think, like, maybe I'm getting lost in the details, right? Like, what is the real problem that I want to do? I've got all of this text here in markdown format. And really, I just want to convert that to HTML. And guess what? Like, converting markdown to HTML is a pretty solved problem. There's so many different tools that you can use. You can literally Google for, like, convert markdown to HTML and find, like, you know, 50 different websites that'll let you paste in HTML or paste in Markdown and give you the HTML. But I didn't want to like paste this into a site because I wasn't sure if it was like being sent up to their server and all this other stuff. So then I decided to just, uh, you know, apt install pandoc. And pandoc is, uh, you know, a command line tool that lets you convert things from one format to another. It's not super, super heavyweight. You know, there might be like, you know, a Go binary that you can download that specifically does markdown to HTML, but for whatever, uh, you know, in this case, Pandoc is totally fine. So I installed Pandoc. And now what Pandoc will let you do is, you know, I'm gonna go into my material. I think it's in here. Uh, yeah, so this is like the directory where that markdown file is on disk. And uh, with Pandoc, you can just do Pandoc and then put in the file name that you like, in this case, like creating an SSH key pair. And then you can just run it and that converted all of the markdown to HTML. We can see here, right, all the paragraph tags are there for this one and then the one below it, it's all good to go. You know, empty lines are stripped from the file, perfect. It totally solves this problem. Uh, except with Pandoc, notice here, like the wheel, like we'll be using SSH keys. Uh, this has like a fancy uh, apostrophe there or whatever, right? It's not like the straight quote that is in the markdown file itself. So if we go back over here, right, this is like the st straight apostrophe there. Um, so in Pandoc, what you could do is rerun the command with uh, this one thing called from markdown smart. And then that'll give you the straight quotes. So let me see if I scroll back up here. Yeah, there it is. We'll see like the wheel right here. It just has the straight, straight quote and we're good to go. So, I mean, you know, you can uh, just leave this output here and copy paste it as you need it. Like when you're creating your slides as you go, 
you know, in this case, like I would just take these things out and then I'd be like, okay, cool. Let me go back to the second one here. And we, you know, you can go through the workflow of just copying like, okay, these are the two paragraphs that I want. Great. Or, you know, you can choose to write this out to like, you know, uh, an HTML file and then just open them up side by side in Vim. Like, you know, at this point, it just becomes like workflow optimization, right? Uh, ideally, like I'm not zoomed in this much, for when, you know, when I'm not making a video. So like I would have that output like on the left here and the slides here on the right. And then I can very easily just move those paragraphs over while I'm creating their slides. And like that's a solution I made in the end for this specific problem. But I am going to start working with Vim macros again, you know, in the future because they were really useful for... Uh, you know, doing that thing, but I didn't really know about the other stuff. But, you know, there's going to be other use cases where macros will totally be useful. So uh, actually, maybe that's a good thing to drop in the comments, right? Like, what are you specifically using uh, macros for or maybe Vim Surround? Uh, let us know. Also, if you're interested in that deployment course, it is not available right now. But I do have this link here on my site, which I'll leave a link to in the description that gives a TLDR on what the course is about. Basically, we're going to be using Docker, Ansible, Terraform, and Friends to deploy any type of Dockerized web application to production. So on the bottom here, there is a sign up if you want to get notified when it drops. It is going to be a paid course, but you will get a discount signing up here. Uh, you know, I don't run any ads on my YouTube videos. These courses are basically how I'm able to create this type of free content. So uh, any support there is much appreciated. If you want to learn more about deploying apps, uh, this is where to go when it's available. There is no ETA yet, but that's kind of like going beyond what the focus of this video is for. Uh, in any case, with that said, you know, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And on that note, I will see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.